and it it is okay for you to ask questions as we go along if it's something relevant to this i'll cover it straight away but um if it's something i know i'm going to cover later on i might say that okay but you don't have to be quiet while the video is on okay so um this cake i've actually has been in the freezer since march <laughs> so it's um quite a few months frozen and the only the only difference really it's still edible but what happens is that it just becomes more and more moist um so ideally if you're going to bake your cake and freeze it down it's better to have it um just in there for uh, up to a month that's normally my rule month for buttercream because you can freeze buttercream down as well and a month for cakes and the nice thing to know about this is that because you can do that it means you can get yourself more ahead of the game if you've got a number of cakes on your on order for a certain week or a certain day. I'm going to keep the paper on the bottom of mine to start with. I'm going to drop it into the cake tin that I um, baked it in. Um, but I know that this is not, um, if I drop this in, it's going to drop right in. It's not actually going to um, be raised enough for me to be able to trim it. Give me a second because I think you can't, this goes blurred every time you move it. So I have some cards here and they're, they're only used for this purpose, which is why they've got like grease marks on them, but it's just um, so that you can raise your cake in the tin. Now at home, you could just use a drinks coaster. Okay. So all I'm going to do here is put my serrated edge knife flat onto the surface of the tin it, it might scratch the edge of your tin but um, you know it's not going to affect the baking of the cake and the idea here is to get a level surface and if you run that knife nice and flat against the edge it's going to give you that flat surface okay so just come and roll it off can't work with that again and then once you've cut that just run your knife back over to make sure that it is in fact nice and level okay now the excess can just go back into your bag because unless you've got a really domed cake um we don't need to use that but i will go through what happens if you have got an extra raised cake if you've got a little muffin uh, effect like you have there mm -hmm when we've leveled it we'll see what's left and we'll just make the sides nice and straight and vertical okay um, so the next step is to get some buttercream and we want to secure the um, cake to the board okay so what I've got in here is just a little bit of buttercream I've given you a pot and the reason I do that is because this first part could incorporate crumbs in your buttercream so it's always better to just work the small amount so you don't contaminate your big batch especially if you're going to be piping with it or anything else so it's just a kind of a containment thing i'm just going to mix up my buttercream i've got microwaves here if we need to soften if you do need to soften you only want to zap it for, for maybe two three seconds um it doesn't take much to loosen it off but you need something a bit like margarine consistency so that you can actually spread it on your cake without it pulling the crumb and this I'm just going to take a little bit onto my palette knife and spread it onto the board. Now I'm working with a straight edge palette knife here. There is a, a cranked one, but this is actually, it's got too much flexibility and to stir. So I normally use this one to spread and this one to stir. Okay, straight so one. So having put a little bit of buttercream onto my card, I'm just going to flip that over. And then we have a piece of greaseproof paper, which I've given out to you already. It's just square. Okay, that's going to go on top. I'm going to have it this way because then it'll be face down onto the big board. And then you're going to get your big board and pop that on top of that. This is all about just trying to get it all in place without handling the cake. It's an old board, this one. So we're just going to flip that over. Clear your crumbs out of the way and then remove your tin. I don't normally have tins that have got a removable base. It's not essential to have one. When you're baking, the most important thing is to have a 90 degree angle in here rather than a ridge. Um, okay, so then we can take that off and peel back your paper to reveal your cake. So now we've got 
a cake that is centralised on the small board sitting on the grease through paper that will move freely on the big board. Okay, so I'm just going to show you how to split this and fill it as well. Quick question. Yeah. Um, would you normally put the cake on upside down essentially? Yes. Um, with sponge cake covering, you want the flattest side uppermost so you get the best finish. Um, so, and also because I've trimmed that bottom cake, the, the top side, what was the top side, you've got loose crumbs here. So if you try and put buttercream on there, you have, you are more prone to it all lifting and being a bit of a pain. Whereas this one's got a very light skin on it. It gets slightly darker than um, if you, <laughs> I, I prefer not to, but you can trim it off if you want to, if you can, you can take the um, dark outer layer off but I think you do it does cause you a bit of a problem so I prefer not to okay uh, I think the only there are a couple of occasions when you don't use use it flipped over but mostly we do okay so now what I'm going to do is actually take my sharp serrated edge knife and cut in a score line which is going to be big enough for me, me to be able to see now you probably think at this point that I've actually lost it because what she's doing she's cutting a vertical line not a I want to split it surely not um but what I'm trying to do is actually get a line that should have been a bit straighter so I'm going to do another one for you that is um going to give you a guide when you've cut the top half off and taken it off completely you know which way to put the lid back on Okay, so if when you cut through the center of the cake you're off, so you're like at a diagonal, then you know which way to line the two lines up to get it straight. Otherwise, what was a straight cake will become a wonky cake. Okay, and then now what I can do is just cut straight through and I don't have to worry about how level this is. You can actually buy tools like this one here, which is a leveler. It's got a cheese wire on it. And you can adjust this, make it come up and down on the feet, and that you would saw through. It's quite a long sawing action to go through here rather than a pressure on the wire because it breaks. The only problem with these is you can't buy the wire replacements. So you're buying the whole thing over again, and they are very weak. So I tend to just show this and then show you how to do it with a normal dead knife because it's lot less costly if it breaks, the knife won't break. Okay, so all I'm going to do is just position the knife roughly halfway through. You can split more than once, but today we're not going to, and then just give it a good old cut. And don't worry too much about what mess you've made. Okay, so you can see as I've cut this off, I've got a really dodgy step in there, but that's all right because I know which way this is going to go back on. Okay, how many times have you actually cut the cake? I know I used to do it and I put this on the side and I go, right, whatever I do now, I'm not going to move that and I'm not going to move that. And then you move it and then you move that one and then you're kind of, oh, so which way did this go on? Um, so this is quite a, it's quite a eureka moment I'm fun for people. So I'm just going to mix this up again a little bit. It's a little bit on the firm side. We'll set the microwaves on super low. And if you do need to warm your buttercream up, you just want to put it in there for a couple of seconds. Okay, and we'll drop that down onto the uh, cake and start to spread. So I'm just supporting the board. This is where one of the reasons why it's harder to do it on a small board because you've got to, you've only got a small area that you can hold. So I normally just put my fingers up against the board and just block it as I'm as it's moving, and hopefully that'll be enough. You can hold onto the cake a little bit. And then the idea is to spread backwards and forwards without lifting the knife. Because when you lift the knife, it pulls straight through to cake and possibly pulls your crumbs off. So the idea is to just do a continuous spread all the way around. Now, I know this is a little bit like sucking eggs, but in a way, it's, um, it's just a good thing to get the into the habit of. And as you spread your butter on your toast in the morning, you can practice <laughs> it's like I do with the mashed potato. I practice my piping on mashed potato. You just said that's really simple, but that's the first time I've ever seen like, no lift. Oh, like yeah, a crumb. <laughs> that's, it's basic, but you're like, oh, it's, it's just simple. All, you know, you sort of almost gloss over it. I want that hint. Yeah, good. <laughs> I'm going to ask about mashed potatoes because I read it. I read it just yesterday online, and it has all sorts of. What? How does that work? <laughs> I think what 
you mean? I was joking. Because I read a lot of stuff I was reading was about using instant mashed potatoes rather than using icing. Oh, just as a practice. Yeah, smooth. You want it super smooth. Just pipe with it. It's the same consistency as buttercream. Instant mash. Or just mash. But I mean, it might be a bit lumpy and a bit. Yeah. You could put it through one of those mashes, couldn't you? You know, they're like sieve mashes, yeah, grated yeah, things, yeah. and then that's super smooth. And you can pipe like really beautiful designs on your, on your <laughs> shepherd's pie. <laughs> this is all on here now. <laughs> and just a little tip for you is, of course, at some point you're going to lift, need to lift the knife. So um, what you want to do is get to the point where you've only got one little part of that knife on the cake. So the little edge will come off, okay? Now, today, we're not going to put a thick coating in here. If you want a thick coating, that's absolutely fine, but you're going to need to put the cake as it is now, maybe with the crumb coat as well, but you're going to need to put it in the, in the fridge for a couple of hours. And we don't have two hours to wait before we want to ice this cake. We are going to refrigerate them, um, but not for that length of time. Um, and if you've got a tall cake where you're putting lots of layers in and stacking, you can't just put six layers of filled with buttercream and hope that the bottom one won't squish. You need to put a filling, a layer, fridge. You could do another filling and a layer, fridge, filling, a layer, fridge, and then assemble the whole thing once the butter inside, once the filling inside is hard. Okay. Um, and ideally, if you're doing a tall stacked cake, I would say you're probably better off assembling the whole thing, getting each, maybe a split it into thirds as you're as you're doing you know you work on a third of the cake each time which might have a layer and then it goes in the fridge once it's been crumb coated overnight and then you have to bring it out and it needs to be at room temperature almost before you actually ice because the cold in the cake will come out and through your sugar paste and create condensation once you're once you've sugar paste coated your cake it can't go back in the fridge Okay, so it can only go in the fridge as cake or with buttercream, not sugar paste. Um, so this is all right if this oozes out on onto the side because we're going to coat the outside as well. But some people like to put jam and buttercream mm. in. Okay, now if that's the case, then you need to actually realise that jam and butter jam and buttercream will slide yeah. against each other. So what you would do is um, take a, a bag piping bag put a bit of buttercream in there cut the end off and you would pipe a sausage outline with the buttercream okay and that creates a dam and then what you can do is spoon in your soft filling and then continue to pipe on top of that with your buttercream but because you've only got a single sole buttercream outline that should contain and stop it from sliding okay and then you put your lid back on so that's the way you would do it if you want a soft filling and or butter, you know, if, if, if you want buttercream on there as well. So you can do buttercream and jam or just jam, but you'll need that dam of buttercream on the outside. Okay, so once you're happy with the, the um, coating inside, you've then got to locate that line. That's a straight one and that's a straight one. This one of mine was a bit wonky, wasn't it? This one was thicker that's the problem don't cut two lines in <laughs> i think my other one was a bit yeah, off anyway wasn't it is that one isn't it yeah, so we'll just line those two lines up and that should give you back your level cake okay so now we're ready to buttercream coat the outside to set all the crumbs Not tablet. Is <laughs> that a good warm up in the microwave? Nice and soft. And then I'm going to transfer onto my cranked palette knife because it's just so much easier to spread. This one, as you spread, the knuckle of the knife might catch. Okay, so it's easy to return. Can you see it over there? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so we'll just drop this on, and it is a thin coating, not like if you want a buttercream coated cake just on its own. Um, this thin coat is only to set the crumbs and it mustn't be, it, you, honestly, you should be able to see the cake coming through it. So it's almost like a naked cake effect. 
And if you are having a buttercream coated cake rather than sugar paste, which is very popular at the moment, then um, you still start with a very thin crumb coat. That goes to the fridge. And then when it comes back out again, you could put your thicker coating of buttercream, which could be like up to a centimeter before you scrape it. Um, and that means that when you do scrape it, because you've only got a thin crumb coat, you're not gonna pull the crumbs through. Okay, but if you put a thick coat on at this point and you just want to put extra buttercream on, when you scrape, you're possibly gonna incorporate crumbs in your outside finish. With sugar paste, if you put a thick layer on, what happens is, is as you smooth and manipulate the sugar paste once that's gone on, um, just to make it look nice, the thickness of the buttercream will start to melt in the warmth and the movement and it will shift. So in the end, you end up with bubbles and dinks and dents. So we only ever put a very thin layer on when we're doing, when we're covering a cake with uh, sugar paste. Sugar paste and fondant are the same thing. And ready rolled icing, they're all the same thing. Okay, so I've just got a nice amount on the top here. And as before, I'm trying very hard not to lift the knife. So I don't just want to do this because eventually you're just going to bring those crumbs through. But it is okay if you see crumbs because they will be set in this coating. So I'm just going to bring that over to the edge. Like so. And if you have a look, you can see that that has only got a very thin coating, so I can still see cake. So once you've done that, you can work on your sides. I'm just going to take a little bit more onto my knife and start to work on the sides. I like to work at the back of my cake, but also it's an advantage for you because you can then actually see what I'm doing. But the idea here is that we just want to spread this as thinly as possible all the way around the cake. Okay, so an initial, just an initial thin layer. Where I've gone, where I've started, I've got quite a lot of buttercream, so I'm just going to bring that round to where I don't have any. So better not to put too much on just work with what you've got. And if you don't think you've got enough, then add more. I'm just spreading all the way around. Just get a little bit more. Turn this around so you guys can see as well. So the knife itself is vertical. I'm using the almost the edge of the knife is what's doing the movement with the buttercream. Okay, so it's kind of a side to side movement like that, but vertically. Just get it all the way around. The other thing to remember on this is it doesn't have to be looking perfect at this stage. So we're going to put this in the fridge and when it comes out, we're going to hot knife. So we're going to smooth with a hot knife. And that will make it the finish look a lot better than it will do um, at this point. Okay, so don't worry if this does not look perfect. One of the key things is actually knowing how you're holding the tool because it's very easy to either be top press heavy or bottom press heavy. So what I mean by that is if my knife is not vertical, if it is actually leaning, then what you're going to do is take more off the top or more off the bottom. So um, the pressure on the knife is quite important um, and it's something to get used to. So if you can't understand why it's taking it off on the top corner for you, that's quite normal for that to happen and it will be just the angle of your knife that needs tweaking. Okay. So that's probably just about all right on the side here. I don't want too much on that bottom board either, so I'm going to just have to clean that off. Now, say that you had um, a big gap in here, okay? Um, because your cake was very domed, once you've turned it over, you've got that gap and you need to close that gap. And what you would do is take the spare cake, some of that, crumble it into a bowl, 
put a little bit of buttercream in with that crumbed cake, mix it together so you've got like a um, patty, like a filler, and then you would take that on your knife and push it into those gaps rather than put just, just buttercream in there because just buttercream if at room temperature will be soft so it'll stop you from getting a really nice flat side. All right, so that sponge cake filler is very useful if you don't want to lose the height. Okay, so you don't have to always cut completely flat and lose that amount of cake. So the last bit now is actually to get these corners looking good. So the idea here is you keep your knife clean, you're working with the crank knife again, balance the knife horizontally to the edge of the cake just so it's resting on the buttercream that needs to be neatened off. And then you draw your knife in to the center of the cake and that will cut off your excess. So you're not actually spreading it on, you're, you're taking it off. So it's quite an angle on the, on the knife as well. So we're dropping that down onto the top there and you draw the knife in to go all the way around. When you look at the YouTube clips, they're like fast forward at this point, aren't they? And you think, oh my goodness, and it's up. Like, <laughs> Can't do that, so you need to do it slowly. And use your greaseproof paper to um, help you turn the cake. So you just draw that in to get your fairly sharpish edge. And that would be a good finish for um, if you want to just put an extra coat of buttercream on there later. Okay, so I'm just gonna look around the cake. I've got a bit of excess here. Just gonna take that out. There's a bit more on the board here, so I'll just, just take that all out or smooth it down to get cake buttercream. Needs to go on a bit here, but hasn't got any on. If you um, if you realise that there's some cake showing on the side, all, and you've done all this, all you need to do is go back to add a bit more buttercream and scoop. It's the sides that get most people, so the, the top edges that get most people. Okay, so that then would have a layer of cling film on it, but very loosely draped so that um, we don't tuck the cling film under the board. And the reason for that is because as you put it onto the shelf in the fridge, the cling film will stick to the surface of the shelf. And as you push it in, you might find that it will tug and flatten part of your cake. So the cling film just goes over loosely. And the only reason for that is any odours in your fridge. Um, equally my fridge is outside so if it's raining we don't want you to get rain drops on there. Okay so that's the only reason for the cling film. And that will go into the fridge for probably about half an hour because I'll be showing you something in, in between. And this process is kind of the last Step before you go ahead and ask. So it gives you that last chance to kind of get it all nice and neat and tidy. And it's surprising the difference it makes. So this has been in the uh, uh, fridge for about 20 minutes, isn't it? 20 minutes, half an hour. And to touch, it's firm, it's not solid, but to touch, it's firm. So that's nice. But to touch also, it's dry now. So when we try and ice the sugar, ice it with a sugar paste or the fondant, that needs moisture to help it adhere. So because this is dry, when we put that on, it's gonna go, well, what do you want me to do? I don't know. And that's why we need to make this tacky. And the hot knifing then not only smooths it, but it also makes it tacky, okay? You need to be quite meticulous about hot knifing all over so that the whole surface is tacky. Because if you leave a patch that's not got any um, moisture on it, then this won't notice it. And that's how you get those air bubbles. Okay, so the air bubbles that you get that are between the cake and the sugar paste are caused because there's not enough moisture on the cake or you've missed a bit, as it were. So I've got two knives in here. It doesn't matter which one you work with, but I'm trying to think where should I put this is the best place, isn't it, for everyone to see. So that that cup, boiling hot water, be careful. I'll give you a cup each in a minute. Um, just dry it off because you don't want the water on the cake. It's about putting the heat onto the cake to make it smooth and tacky. And what you'll find is after a few spreads, you need to put that knife back in, into your cup 
and use the next one. And that's the only reason you've got two in there is so that you've got one heating and one is you're use, while you're using the other one. You've got about two or three spreads before it goes cold again. This is so hot at the moment when it comes out, I can't touch the back of my hands. So if, I don't know if you can see, but it is going shiny. So that's my indicator. I start at the top and I, I have a bit of a, you know, pattern to what I'm doing so that I don't just go, oh, I'll spread here, then I'll spread there. That way I've got a bit of a system so I know I've gone over the whole cake. And your double check, which I won't be able to do for you today, is to just test with your finger and it should feel wet. Okay, but only from the warmth the melting, not the water. So then once you've done the top, you can go ahead and do the sides. So just the, just put the knife dead flat onto the surface, dead flat, okay? Um, so you're not trying to pull any more buttercream off, you're smoothing nice and flat. But, um, you know, only about an inch at a time and then you've got to Uh, swap knives. Okay. The um, these are just in that trough on the top of the microwave. Just um, hand towels. Always a bit of cooking towel for the day as well. I've got more kitchen towel. I'll get it out for you. That's the kid. Kitchen towels on a roll. Everyone's got to touch the roll. The hand towels are loose. Not everyone's got to touch your hand towel. I do school. <laughs> it's all those sorts of things. Um, it took me two weeks to get this. Work it out. <laughs> you know, just and oh, and what about? Every, yeah, and then you have to wait for everything to come in. So, um, the last thing was the milk, because you think to yourself, well not everyone's going to want to handle the same milk bottle so you're onto sachets and then it's like oh, just think, oh okay because even before um, all of this happened we we kind of set up with sanitizers and, and hand towels because we knew didn't we that it's coming yeah okay so systematically go around the cake into changing the knives as you go. Just do that for the purposes of the video and for you because you can't see what I'm doing. It's a secret. <laughs> the um, when your cake is a little bit um, crustier on the outside, that promotes the crumb. Um, Okay, so that's the hot knifing, and then it doesn't go back to the fridge. We just put that on the side and we're ready to ice. Now I'm going to show you how to warm the sugar paste up. So with this block of paste, I find it, especially if you've got a large block, it's actually easier if your hands are a bit sore to um, break it into a couple of pieces if it's quite firm. I never ever microwave sugar paste to soften it. There's fat in there, and what happens is it gets super soft in the middle, and as you mix that into the fairly solid dry on the outside you get crumbs and bits so it's better not to put it in the microwave um, so I just kind of press and turn it to warm it up and combine it if it's a packet of paste that you haven't used for a while then you need to just check that the edge isn't dry because uh, that is a pain if you get all the crumbs in there and then you can't squish them out so if this was a brand it wasn't a brand new packet I can just say shave the edge off keep that to one side and incorporate that little clump first um, before I put it into the rest of the paste and then get all the lumps out if we need to use it so just pressing and turning the worst thing you can do is actually flatten and fold your paste if you keep folding it then what you end up with is air bubbles and they are like phyllo pastry not below puff pastry when you you know how you've got all the layers um, so if you have folded your paste and start to roll out you'll start to notice them as little surface air bubbles which you can actually break into you can pull them back and there's more paste underneath so they're very thin air bubbles um, and, and that's a problem because you don't get a neat finish you'll end up with bits in the top of your cake 
So warming up is quite important. So when the, when the um, packet says on the outside, ready to roll, it's not ready to roll, ready to knead and roll. And uh, you can't over knead it. So the fat, the warmth in your hands, you might find in the summer when, it, when we do have a warm day. So not today, we're fine today. Um, you'll find it will be softer. Once you've got the two batches warmed up separately, you can just combine and give them a good old splat together so that there's no air in there and then press and turn. So the technique is flatten to about halfway, keep it in a block, okay? No naan breads at this stage. Mm -hmm. So just to halfway, so you don't actually need to put a lot of power in it. And keep going. Now, when you find a bit of a routine with this, You'll get a technique that works for you, but what I like to do is press down, roll back, and turn over with my left hand. So actually, I'm left-handed. I like to control the turn with my dominant hand, but I'm actually pressing with my non-dominant hand. So press, turn, press, turn. So it's almost like a this movement now with a press in between. But um, don't you don't have to do it like that. That's just how I like what it ends up being for me is actually a semi-flat disc uh, but I'm scooching it each time so flatten and turn just to halfway press just trying to agitate the whole pace and what you'll find initially is that you it's going to feel a little bit crumbly probably a little bit sticky maybe a bit grainy and then you'll get to the point where you've got something that feels a bit firmer and just smooth to feel. I'm free sugar paste in. So if you buy a big block and you don't use some of it, you can cut it up into usable blocks and freeze that down in freezer bags. That will freeze for about six months. Once your packet's open, it'll last about a month out of the fridge, just at room temperature. Um, it won't go off, it'll just go dry. And while you're not working with it, so once I've warmed it up, I need to roll it out straight away. Or put it in a bag, and then when it comes back out of the bag to roll, I need to just give it one extra warm up. So now we've got this nice, smooth bag there. Okay. I know it's not, it's a bit far for you to see. Normally I get people to touch it. So. Mm -hmm. um, you can tell that it's warmed up because as I turn it over, it's not cracking or scratching. They're nice and smooth. So I'm quite liberal with my um, icing sugar. Because this is gonna be underneath, it doesn't matter. As long as it's gone through a shaker, it doesn't matter how much you put on. And it's better not to have your paste stick. It's a bit of a fluff magnet as well. Um, so you need to, if you notice bits that shouldn't be there, then pull them out at this stage. And I've given you a pair of um, marzipan spaces here, which have a half centimetre, five mil thickness to them. And they are actually traditionally used for rolling out marzipan because when we used to roll ice cakes, which is kind of coming back in a different way now with um, ganache and buttercream, um, you had to roll your marzipan to a half a centimetre thickness because the royal icing layer was so thin, you needed to block the juice from the cake coming through to the royal icing layer. Um, but we don't need it at five mil thickness for a sugar paste, we need it thinner, but um, it's a good starting point. And I call these my training wheels because it means that you haven't got to think for the first few minutes of rolling out, you haven't got to think as long as your rolling pin ends are resting on it, okay? Make sure your rolling pin is nice and clean. You could put a little bit of icing sugar on there if you think it's going to stick. And today we've got a humid day, so it does make the paste look sort of feel softer and more sticky. Um, what you don't want to do though is, from having the rolling pin rested, pick it up straight away and go on to roll because you'll get bits on the rolling pin. So always, when you pick up your rolling pin, get into the habit of cleaning. A bit OCD this. Take, take what you want out of it, but I'm showing you how I like to work. So, 
sugar yeah, I, I always use icing sugar with um, uh, rolling it when I roll out big pieces of paste. I use um, corn flour for modelling and flowers. So if I'm doing small decorations, that's fine. The only time I'd use corn flour rolling out a cake uh, for icing for a cake would be if I'm using black because um, it's, black is, is one of those colours that just will have this showing yeah. although I'd actually prefer to use fine icing sugar and then steam the cake. Yeah. Um, corn flour it creates a smear, icing sugar will melt under the warmth of your hand and corn flour doesn't and also if corn flour hits a moist surface it gives off a gas as it hits moisture, it gives off a gas, which can actually cause bubbles underneath your cake. Um, and it, it has been known to actually explode. I mean, not in a dangerous way, but just like explode your sugar paste. Mm. And you won't realise, you'll just see this bubble rising and rising, and all of a sudden it goes, we can't stretch anymore, <laughs> and it has to come out. Um, so cornflour is not... No, is the answer. No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I thought that was a very long answer, sorry. So because I'm rolling a, a circle for a circular cake, I do a couple of rolls, checking each time that it's not stuck, and I turn it like a pizza wedge slice, it turn each time. If I wanted a square, I'd roll it and then I'd turn it 90 degrees and roll again. Because if you, the, the more you can keep this in a circle now, so a round, nice rounded piece of paste now, um, is so much easier to deal with. If you end up with an arm bread, you could possibly be working with a piece of paste that's not big enough or just only just going to be big enough. And if, if it's rolled as an arm bread, you're going to be short on one side. So a um, couple of rolls. Visually look, is it looking like a circle? <laughs> um, if it's sticking, a little bit of icing sugar. All right, keeping your board nice and clean. So a little turn each time. Or oh, it's getting a bit wide there. So actually I'm thinking, use my head, I'll just turn it a little bit more. And because both ends of my rolling pin are on these spaces, I turned it a bit more because it's going wide that way, keeping my circle shape in mind. Um, because I'm on these spaces, it doesn't matter. I don't have to press hard to start with. That's not the idea, just light pressure, light rolling pressure. Let the rolling pin do most of the work and you'll probably find it'll stay in shape. And I don't have to think about um, if I'm pressing too hard or too lightly on one side because it will only go to the thickness of that, those spaces, okay? Now, once you have got it to that thickness, this is five mil now, but it is too thick still. So you need to get this down to a four mil or a three millimeter. And the main difference would be either the type of paste that you have, because the paste, some of the paste now you can buy with gum in it. And if it's got the gum in it, which none, none of you have today, um, you can roll it thinner. So you'd be able to go to like a, a three mil thickness, which is uh, this thickness here, okay? But um, if you've got normal paste and it's feeling really soft, you've got to think to yourself, okay, if I lift this up, it's going to stretch more, which will thin it out. So I'm not going to three mil, I'll go to four mil. So I'm just going to show you to four mil. Um, and we have to take the spaces away to do this, so you're now on your own with it, yeah? So we're going to just start one end and roll. If you notice, I'm not stopping. So what I'm not doing, I should show you on these because it's easier. I'm not doing this, okay, because you're going to get a ripple. Once you get off the spaces, it will ripple. Okay, so what you need to do is find a way of rolling and only stopping at the ends. Okay, so that might be walking it. It might be onto your arms if it's a bigger piece of paste. It might be holding onto one side and rolling with one. So just try and think, don't stop. Or why am I getting ripples? Oh, because I'm stopping. It's um it's a bit like patting your head and rubbing your tummy when you first do this. And I'm, I'm telling you a lot of them, so um, it doesn't matter when you're practicing so much. So, oh, and as I'm coming to the end, I'm not rolling off the edge because you get a thin edge mm -hmm. then and then that will show. So the idea is to stop yourself but go almost immediately back. Um, I'm just rolling it a couple of times. It won't take much to get this down to the right thickness. 
worst case, just lift it off if you come to the end, because on the next turn it will flatten. And you'll be able to feel as well. And when you're working with this for the first time, um, you can't be speedy, uh, but this does start to dry out when you're when you're too you know, when you're not too slow, but when you work slowly with it. So um, if we are going to get some cracks today, that could be why. Okay, if you've warmed it up properly, it should be okay. This constant moving of my hand across here is stopping it from forming a skin. Now to know how big your piece of tape needs to be. I've got this string, I've given you all of this string. And you've got to measure your cake with the string. You're going to measure it from the base of the board, okay, up, across, and down. Lots of I have to put that in there. Only me use both bin now. Um, so if I put my string end at the base of the cake across the top, and down to the base again. Oops. That needs to be the size of my circle. Okay, roughly. It's just a little bit short. I'm a little bit short on this side, but it's pretty much there. And I know when I lift it up with the rolling pin, it's going to stretch a little bit anyway. So I'm happy with that. Um, I can keep when when you're done with the string, just I'll keep it. I use the other things too. So to put this onto the cake now, we need the cake in place. I'm left-handed, so that's going to be on my left side. No, it's not going to be on my right side. So that means you can't see. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. So um, I'm just going to make sure that's not stuck. Suspend my rolling pin across almost the center, it's just off to one side. Take the flat palm of your hands under, rings, watches, bracelets all need to come off for this. Okay, if you notice I haven't um, placed the rolling pin onto the, onto the paste, so it's just suspended, okay, because otherwise I get a dink. Bring your cake in, raise up your icing, support the end, and then unravel. So you've lined it up with the base edge of this cake size, so it should be enough to go onto the cake, okay? And then you're ready to start to stick on. So I'm just gonna run my palm across the top of the cake so that it's squishing all the air out. Because it's tacky, it's gonna, it should stick on. A little bit of icing should go on my smoother. Drop that down. Everything's very light now. So a little smooth. So that's the top. And then leaning over the cake, I want to start at the back to get rid of all these pleats. And normally what I do is I think, oh god, I've got some really bad ones here. So I pick the worst one. Deal with the worst one first, and then you can feel a bit more confident. So I'm going to put my hand underneath the paste and use this part of my hand to scoop up. Okay, the scooping up motion is going to shrink the paste on. If you press down, you're going to flare it out. So scooping is either keeping it where it is or shrinking it a little bit. Um, this hand here is just taking the weight as I work with my left hand. Then turn. So I'm always working on the back of the cake and using my um, greasy paper to turn. If your greasy paper is really crumbly, crummy, got, got lots of buttercream on it, then um, I've got another roll of that. We'll we'll get you another piece uh, and swap it over. Yeah, if that's the same. So opening up, this takes the weight. This hand. We'll tackle the pleat. So normally about two inches at a time. This part of my hand. So scooping up. Okay, and then turn. So don't try and force it all to happen at once. A crumb there, so you can do that. If you have to, just work on an inch at a time and avoid pushing the pleat out of the way. You need to tackle it head on. Just as it comes, deal with it. Don't push it out of the way. Okay, turn in again. Take the weight, scoop up. The reason you want to take the weight is because, um, but not stretch, is because we don't want to tear along here. Okay, 
And if I don't take the weight and I just go jump like that, it's going to cause the stress on, on the top. So take the weight, scoop up this part of your hand and keep going all the way around. And I've made your life a bit difficult today because you're working on a piece of greasy paper. All right. But if you're just working directly onto the board, then it's not going to move around. It will be stuck to the board. So just keep opening up. And you could even go down to your smallest finger if you need to. Okay. Sometimes if there's a time gap between hot knifing and icing, the coldness of the buttercream resets the buttercream and dries it out. And then it doesn't know what to do around the side because it's lost its tacky and it just needs, you need to tell it. You need to get it pressed back on again. Okay, so that's the top and the sides attached. Now we're going to sleeve the sides. If you feel like it, you, you can do more work on the top. If you feel there's a bit bubbly along here, use this part of your hand here. I call this a chicken drumstick. Okay, in there, that bit is going to sit on. Okay, so just run, kind of scooch your hand together a little bit. You can do it either hand, whichever is more comfortable. Okay, so top and bevel is fine. Then we're ready to do the sides, and you've got two sides to this smoother. One's a straight edge and one's a curvy edge. You use the curvy edge down, pressing into the cake down to the bottom. Now, if you wanted to, say that was secured instead to your little board, but to your big board instead, yeah, with no grease proof, then you might have rolled your paste out big enough to cover the board at the same time. In which case, if, if you are doing that, you just need to be careful at this stage that you don't make a line into the paste. Okay, so you can actually cover your cake and board in one, but we're doing it separate. So pressing into the cake, keeping this nice and vertical, because if that is at an angle, then you're going to see it on your cake. What, what will happen is it'll all look good and smooth, and then you'll look at the side of your cake and you'll realise that it looks like that. Okay, or like that depending on how heavy you press. So when you hold the tool, a little bit like the knife, um, you need to make sure you've got equal amount of pressing on the bottom as you have on the top. So if you hold it like that, you're gonna end up pushing more on the bottom. Just hold on to the knobby bit, okay? Don't worry, this will all come clear. It's one of those things where you think, I'm not gonna remember all that, but actually it's just better to visualize it and then it's surprising how much does actually go in without worrying. And I will remind you. Okay, so now we've got a smooth side and we want to get a bit more of an angle down the bottom. So what I'm going to do is turn this over. So I've got the sharp edge and I'm going to press, again, applying the same amount of pressure so I'm not at an angle around the bottom edge here. Now what that will do is give you a 90 degree angle and a line to cut. It's just a bit of a guide. Oops, oh. Just poked it in my mouth. Okay, I just want to show you um, there's another tool, a nice 90 degree angle. Smedger, smoother, edger. Yeah, smedger. Um, so we just can run that around the edge. I'll get those out for you so you can have a little go. Just when you look at them, because a lot of the time the smoothers are sold in packs of two, but I never use two smoothers. But I do use this smudger. And if you're looking at taller cakes, this is very useful. Yeah. Or when you're ganache coating a barrel cake, which is done in a different way, ganache coat a tall, tall cake um, would not be iced all over like we've done. You actually put a strip around the side and a cap on the top because it's too tall to be able to do this without this edge tearing and that's where this comes in as well um, i'm only looking at you because you're that's my eye line i have to force myself to look right but it's looking left that's natural there okay so i'm just going to go around this a, a couple of times now um 
you'll notice I haven't got a turntable, but I will get them out. Um, but I don't use the turntable until probably this stage. Okay, and the reason for that is because um, if you've got paste that is overlapping the edge of the board and you lift it, then the weight of the paste is going to droop down the higher, you know, it's, it's, it's got nothing to hold on to it, whereas the table's holding it. So I very rarely um, go on to the uh, table until this stage. Okay. But if your back's hurting, oh, that's better, you can see now. If your back's hurting, then um, uh, you use it because of that. So I'll just go around there. I wonder why I... I wonder why I wasn't furring up because it's ever blurred with my glasses with this mask on. Okay, so the last bit will be the trimming. And there's a couple of ways to trim if you've got the board there, which I'll show you later. But this is the only way really I've found that's useful for this bit. Um, so what I'm going to do is demo at this end and then I'll come to that side so you can see it because uh, I can only do this while it's in front of me. So what I do is run the knife down the side of the case so I know this is nice and uh, vertical and then I simply cut sections. I'll just do this bit and then I'll come to your view. Pull the uh, excess off and then come back and neaten. All right, so if I turn my... Um, I'll just come around here. If you can't see, you might just need to stand and come a little bit closer, I don't know. You've got to make sure that your paste is definitely on the edge. So just push it in so that it's right on this bottom edge here. Draw the knife down, cut lines. Make sure you go all the way through the paste. And then pull those bits off carefully. Clean off your knife and go back and you get this neat finish. I've got a little dink there but you can disguise that with a ribbon. So pressing on, draw down <laughs> and cut down. It's quite a long demo this but gives you the idea. Ah. You can use a pastry brush for this, you don't need a paint brush, but all I'm doing is just putting a little bit of cool gold water onto the surface of the uh, board just to help it know where to stick. You don't have to be too meticulous with that, just enough um, to just help it start to hold. And then when I roll my paste, I don't need to roll it out to the full length, full, full diameter of my um, board to start with. I actually finish it off on the board. So I just need a a clump. Uh, this doesn't have to be rolled out too thickly. And we press down. Roll it up in the same way as you did for your cake. And then you can go ahead and start to roll it out. So just a little bit of icing sugar for this, nothing too not nothing too much. So then we're gonna start to roll. Don't need to be on my spaces because I'm not getting anywhere near that thinness to start with. Um, it's definitely, you feel uh, when it's humid outside, you will feel the difference in this pace to a hot, sunny or a dry winter day. Um, humidity definitely has a huge impact on the paste, probably more so than heat. So we'll just get it rolled out to about that much, which is nowhere near um, the size of the board at the moment. Then what I do is put the on slit, which I've just dropped one of those onto your desk. Um, drop your board on there and drop your paste onto there. And then you finish the rolling out on 
the board. And if you start rolling from the center out, That's why you've got a non-slip board. <laughs> Otherwise it flies. Just try and do it evenly all the way around because you want the thickness to be the same pretty much. Taking from the middle or just past the middle rolling to the edge. Keep going until you get to the edge. And that way you've only used a small amount Try not to roll over the edge with the rolling pin because that can thin it. Okay, so now we've got the whole board covered. I'm just going to give it one or two rolls just lightly because I want to make sure that this is not ripply in any way. And that's feeling very tacky, so I'm just going to put a little bit of icing sugar on. Give it a rub. And then if I want to, a smooth, because I've got the icing sugar on there, it shouldn't stick. So the smoother can help. It's quite lightweight. So the more work you can do with the hand is better. So just keep smoothing that until you can't hear the icing sugar anymore. That means it's either embedded itself or it's melted in your hands. And then you come to trim. Now when you trim, you could use a knife. Use a pallet knife rather than a sharp knife because you don't want to cut into the board. So you could just cut in and start to cut down. But I've got another way that I prefer to use. I'm just going to hold on to this. I just need to smooth this a little bit more. Okay. If I use the sharp end of my smoother, but each time I cut, just underneath the board I'm doing this to clean it off because otherwise you're going to get bits which then as you lift your tool back up again will transfer onto the next cut. And I found this, this is the less, least intrusive way of trimming a board. There is another way where if you turn the tool and you rub and keep rubbing because it's only a thin piece you'll start to see the board come through it's a little bit harder because your board's quite light so my hand underneath is struggling a little bit to hold on to it so that method's probably better used if um, you've actually got a cake on there but what that's done there's a bit of silver come off here because this is an old board, but what that's done is created a bevel, so it's curving on the edge and then cutting. Uh, there's not a lot of difference, just another way. Okay, so that's your board trimmed. And then I'm going to leave it at that because after lunch, this will have had a chance just to dry out a little bit because ideally you ice a board a good few hours before you put the cake on. Um, you can even leave it overnight. And that's why you know, it's useful to have a spare board that you can store it and work on. And then once that's dry, the transfer is a lot less stressful than it is if it's not. Um, also, if you put it in an oven, but on the lowest setting, or maybe you've had your oven on and it's still cooling down, uh, put it in there and then it will uh, just take the, the moisture out quicker so you can kind of speed dry it. I use a dehydrator but that's only because I've got one here for class. We use that a lot during the classes because it speeds things up and we can teach within a day rather than have to wait overnight. Um, but this will work, we're going to use these just on the side. All right, so that's your board. Have a go at that and then uh, we'll stop. So to transfer the cake, when you can get um, cake lifters, which is just a sheet of metal square with a handle on the end but in effect I know this isn't square but this board is a, a cake lifter isn't it in a way and you've got your piece of greaseproof paper on here that needs to come off 
of the board before you transfer. Now, um, it is possible to uh, uh, prepare and ice your cake just on the greaseproof paper and not have a board underneath. And then what you would do is just simply transfer the whole thing, having removed the paper. And I'll show you how to do that. It's the same if you've got a board underneath. The reason for the board though, is going back to right at the beginning when I was saying to you that um, this can then be placed on a pedestal stand or stacked on top of the cake. Um, and I have included in your uh, pack uh, a handout on how to stack a cake because <clears throat> that might be something you need to do. Okay, um, so to transfer this then, we need to know roughly where we want it to land. So if you've got, I mean, you don't have to, but you can just visualize it. If I hold this roughly in the center and just make a little mark, that's gonna be the back because I've got a little, little mark on my board. When I transfer this now, I can aim to land the back of the cake on that mark. Okay, if it's dry, you won't be able to press the dink in. Don't need to, don't have to, it's just an idea. And then I'm going to take my cake. If you've got a front or a back to it, so often if there's a blemish that you don't like, you can have that at the back. So I think I had um, got a little bit of cake card showing here, so I'm going to put that on the rear side. Although it's probably easier, my paper's going to come off it easier this way. So I'm going to hold on to the board and just bring the paper and the side of the cake off the board. So you don't want it to topple, but you need enough of this off so that you can turn your greaseproof paper under the board and then position without catching the rest of the board with your knuckles or anything, it's quite a trick, and unravel. Okay. And if it's not central, you can just Give it a little move. If your board's dry, no problem at all. Okay, and at this stage, don't start rubbing this because it will move all over the place and it'll, it'll go bubbly. So that's how you transfer it onto the board. This will hold, because this is still a bit moist, but if you were worried about the uh, board or the cake not sticking, you could put a bit of buttercream onto the board, onto the surface of the iced board, and that will allow it to stick. Okay, so that's how you transfer. The next thing I just want to show you is the ribbon. I'll do that side down because it's easier. I'll put this coming up a bit closer. Okay. So first things first, I like to put tape, double-sided tape, all the way around. So I'll start at the back. This is a very old board. I'll demonstrate with them about three times before I throw them away so I don't add to the recycling pile or the rubbish pile. Um, and my tape, you can use narrower, but ideally you don't want it more than 12 mil because that's the depth of the board, okay? And then we're just gonna press that on, keep it nice and flat. And when I, when I work, I never raise this onto a turntable. I always have it on the surface and I use my surface as my flat guide rather than try and line it up with the top edge. Okay, so that's just going to go around, and as that goes on, I'm just pressing nice and firm. When you get to the end, I'm just going to actually just snip it off where it joins. I've got two pairs of scissors here. I'll clean these off in a minute. These are for cutting the ribbon. You've got a pair for the tape in your box okay but i've only got one one pair of ribbon scissors and when i when i say they're ribbon scissors they're just like um you having your needle, needlework box N you don't cut paper with it or anything else okay so i'm just going to peel back the double-sided tape that's probably the most stressful part of the day getting the tape getting the top of the tape um and I it's, 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 <laughs> it's like it, it, there's no trick to it you have to just find the way okay so that's now on there um and i can start to attach my ribbon now i am going to start by showing you the ribbon on the side of the cake because you have the option to put some on there as well 
I'm just going to measure out what I need. This tape is it's just satin. It's a 12 mil, and um, it's there's no right or wrong side to it. I'm just going to cut. I can cut this straight. So all I've done is measured it so it overlaps slightly. Okay, slightly overlapping. Um, there's no right or wrong side to it, but it does seem to want to curl one way. So if it's curling that way, then that'll be on the inside. Now, when I've got a slight overlap on there, I'm going to put the tape on one side. And there's a reason for that. So the inside of this one side is going to have a bit of double-sided sticky tape. Okay. Off. Then we drop it around the cake. You can't pin it, glue it, stick it in any way. You're working on um, it being taut. Okay. Um, right, for the purposes of the video, that's overlapping now. Can you see? It's an overlapping there. Now, where it overlaps, Because I've got the tape, but I haven't pulled the backing of the tape off, I can cut that end at an angle and then it will be put, peel the backing on the double sided tape and then it will stick to itself. But because I've got um, the tape on there, the angle that I cut won't fray. So all I'm going to do is just cut across. It doesn't matter which way. So having cut the taped end, at an angle, I'm now going to peel the backing off. From the inside. Take a deep breath. It actually comes off the ribbon easier than it will off your board. And we join the two pieces together. Just make sure that it's nice and tight all the way around. So that now overlaps. Nice and neat. And it hasn't frayed because I cut it with the tape on it as well. All right, so that's your ribbon round your cake. The nice thing about this is when the cake's dry, you'll find that this cake, this ribbon can move. So if you subsequently decide that you don't want the join there, you can move it. I should, I can do it, but it's a little bit, it's sticking to it a little bit at the moment. So my join for the board will be at the, the same place as this one. Okay. So this time, you can either measure it out or um, you can leave it on the roll. Start off. I'm going to be, this one I've gone on a different way, but I'm just going to line this up. I apologise because I can't actually do this. Um, let me go a little way around and then I'll go to this side. The important thing is that you keep your head straight because if you're like this or if I decide to start sticking this just by making this go round like that instead of turning my board you're going to go wobbly okay so you make contact stretch it just so, so make it go taut and then stick it on turn taut stick it on turn taut, until you get all the way round to make the bow, you take a little strip of tape and pop that into the center. Peel that off. Fold the two ends in so they make contact with the tape to create your two loops. Turn that, keep it where you've got the join here. Take a tiny bit. Put that across ways so it goes from side to side. It's a little bit over on that side, so I'm just going to trim. Once you cut your ribbon pieces, you don't need the needlework scissors anymore. You can just use the normal ones. Peel that off so you've got your sticky. Take your piece here. Turn that over so you've got the neat side. Pop that on. Fold it over one side. Press hard. Fold it over the other side, press hard. 
and then turn it back again because you need another extra bit of tape so that you can actually get it onto your cake. So, I mean, the general rule, people used to use um, Pritt stick to stick ribbon on board, on the board. The oil from the Pritt stick goes through the ribbon. Pins, not allowed to put pins anywhere near cakes, just in case someone ends up being served with it. So no to the pins. Solo tape doesn't work, but double-sided sticky tape does. So I'll just pull that off so I've got this sticky side. If I bring my cake back in, you could either then, if you wanted to hide the join, or if this is going to be at the front of your cake, or perhaps there's a little area here which is a bit messy because I can see um, board. So I'm just going to think, right, okay, we'll just disguise that. And now we've got a little bow. This is a nice way to finish your cake off. Whatever you do, very simple, very neat. All right. There we go, one iced cake.